Hello again, Ace Trip students. Mr. Meunier here, going through uh, section 8.4 on area of a triangle. Uh, this section's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, pretty easy, as I assume most of us know how to find the area of a triangle. That formula would be one half base times height. Um, like you've seen many, many, many times. Uh, your book here is gonna use the letter K to represent the area of a triangle simply because we use A so often to label angles of triangles. So don't be confused by notation if you see fine K. So K is gonna represent the area. Uh, and what we're simply gonna to try to do today is figure out kind of shortcut formulas. And if we're not, in case we're not given enough information to do one half base times height. I'm gonna walk us through a couple of uh, proofs on these alternate area formulas. So again, we know the area of a triangle, I'll call it K, is always one half base times the height. Let's say we have a triangle, triangle A, B, C, with side A, side B, and side C. And again, lowercase letters are always opposite the angle, which is an uppercase letter. Um, the height of a triangle would always be perpendicular at a right angle through here. The dashed line I just put in the, uh, through uh, angle B, perpendicular to side B. Uh, the base would be, in this picture, B. Let's say, in this case, we don't know the height, but we do know side B, side C, and angle A. From those three things, we can immediately find the area if we utilize some so Katoa from before. Uh, if I, if we ignore kind of the left side and just focus on, or excuse me, ignore the right side and just focus on the left side of this particular triangle, what I just outlined in purple, would be a right triangle where I know angle A, I want the height, which is opposite of angle A, and I know side C, which happens to be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. We can set up a little sign opposite hypotenuse right triangle uh, ratio here. The sign of angle A will be the opposite, which is the height over the hypotenuse, which is side C. Uh, I can multiply the C over. C times the sine of A equals H. From this, we can take C sine of A and substitute it in to our standard one half base times height formula. That would give us a new area formula of one half base B times, instead of height, C sine of A. And this would be a, now a direct formula to find the area of this particular triangle because we know B, we know C, and we know angle A. Uh, we can manipulate this a few different ways and get the other possibilities. So maybe it could be one half instead of BC. Maybe it's AB. Sine instead of A would be C. Or last, Maybe the area K is one half um, AC sine of B. So now, if you have a side, an angle, and a side, we can immediately find the area of those triangles without having to worry about finding the height officially. Uh, when I see this, I always notice how the two sides, B and C, differ from the angle A here, or the sides A and B differ from the angle C, sides A and C differ from angle B. Um, and here are your formulas. Uh, in, in a typical setting, I, I would have given you these formulas on tests and quizzes. We're not kind of in a traditional sense right now, so you can obviously be looking at your notes to find these formulas. But realize I would have given these to you uh, normally as well. So real quickly, how can we find the area of triangle ABC? Uh, if I get a picture going here, A, B, C, side A, side B, side C, 
we know angle B is 47 degrees. We know side A is 4.7. We know side C is 12.4. Those three things are all I need to find the area of this triangle. I don't need the height anymore. I don't need one half base times height. As we know area can be one half A times C times the sine of B. Area is going to be one half 4.7 for A, 12.4 for C, the sine of our 47 degree angle. And then it's as simple as keep your calculator out. 0.5 times 4.7 times 12.4 uh, times the sine. Maybe uh, 47 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. We should get about 21.3 square units out of that. Uh, and again, this is an area, so you're, it would be uh, something squared. Either put square units or units squared. Okay, so that's one offshoot of your normal one-half base times height formula. Uh, we can do this as well if we know an angle, angle, side, or an angle, side, angle. So to kind of set the, the tone here, let's say we have a triangle. Uh, a... B, C, side A, side B, and side C. Let's say this time we know angle C. We, whoopsie, did not want to do that. We know angle B, and we know side C. We make a, say we're given B, C, and little c. From that, since I know angle B and angle C, we also know angle A. I'm going to circle that one. Um, we can find A. So based off of this, we do have enough information to find the area of this triangle without going into the height. Um, we can do that because again, the area is one half base times height. Previously, we talked about how we can do one half base instead of height, C sine of A. That's what we just developed. Uh, looking at this formula, I know A, I know C, but I don't know the base. We don't know B here. Uh, we can find B now, though. This is a non-right triangle. I have angle C and side C. If we have an angle on opposite side, we can utilize the law of sines. I also know angle B. We can figure out side B. We can say the sine of angle C over C equals the sine of angle B over B. If we cross multiply, we get B sine of C equals C sine of B, which means B, the base of this triangle, would be C sine of B divided by side B. This piece can now substitute in for the base of our triangle. And if we write that out, we're gonna have the area is one half, instead of B for base, we're gonna substitute, replace that with C sine of B over B times side C times the sine of A. And if you look back at our, um, our figure, sine A, we know angle A, we have that circled. Side C, we have that boxed, we know that piece. Angle B is boxed, we have that. Uh, side C, whoopsie. I made a mistake here. In this manipulation, let's go ahead and go back, go back to the law of signs.
over uh, B sine C equals C sine of B. I want B by itself. I'm dividing by the sine of C. So over here, need to clean this up and realize C sine of B is divided by the sine of C. That makes more sense. Because now we know side C is box, we know angle C is box, we know angle B is box, we know side C is box, and here's the one half from the original formula. Uh, if we clean this one up a little bit, we get K equals one half C times C is C squared, sine B sine A times sine of A, sine of B divided by the sine of C. And here is another formula to find area of a triangle. Uh, I tend to remember this because the side is always in the numerator and its angle is in the denominator. The other two angles are in the numerator. Uh, if you look at the offshoots of this, it follows that same pattern. So for instance, uh, side A, numerator, angle A, denominator, B and C, numerator. Uh, again, side B is in the numerator, angle B, denominator, A and C angles are in the numerator. So I, I use that if I don't have a typical A, B, C case like this example. We have triangle D, E, F, uh, side D, side E, side F. We know Angle D is 34.4 degrees. We know angle E is 14.8 degrees. And we know side D is 13.9. Since we have two angles, we can figure out angle F immediately. Because F plus 14.8 plus 34.4 has to be 180. So F for our angle will be 180 minus 14.8 minus 34.4, giving us 130.8. Now we have enough information to find the area of this triangle. Now again, I know it's not a typical ABC case, but it's gonna be a one half. I know side D, so that's a D squared. The angle for that is in the denominator, sine of D, and then the other two angles, sine E, sine F, will be in the numerator. The area is one half times 13.9 squared times the sine of 14.8, Sine of F, 130.8, over the sine of D, 34.4. And then we can plug this in the calculator and get 0.5 times 13.9 squared times fraction of the sine of 14.8 times the sine of 130.8, whoopsie, uh, over the sine of 30, 4.4, I think. Let me check my, yeah. Can't read my own handwriting. Sine of, oopsie. Oh no. Oh no, no. All right, try that again. Times a fraction sine of 14.8 times sine of 
130.8 over the sine of 34.4. And we should get about 33.06, 33.1 units squared. All righty. Uh, then one more formula here. Hero's formula. We can use this if we have all three sides of a triangle. I'm not going to go through the proof of this in your textbook if you're interested. Uh, but basically, we have a triangle ABC, and we don't know any angles. We just know side A is four, side B is seven, and side C is nine. We know nothing about the height. We can still find the area of this triangle. Uh, it comes down to the formula above, where first we have to find S. S is the semi-perimeter of this triangle. Semi-perimeter is just half of your perimeter, where the perimeter would be the, the sum of all the outer edges, all three sides. So for us, the semi-perimeter is one half of four plus seven plus nine, which is half, four plus seven plus nine is 20, which is 10. So our semi-perimeter is a 10. From that, the area would be radical, our semi-perimeter, 10, times the difference of the semi-perimeter in A, 10 minus four, times the semi-perimeter and B difference, 10 minus seven, times the semi-perimeter in D or C difference, 10 minus nine. So that's gonna give you radical, 10 times six, times three, times one, which is radical 180 uh, in decimal. That would be 180. radical 180, which is six radical five as an exact form or 13.4 square units. All right, guys, that's it for uh, today. Hopefully these uh, area offshoots can kind of speed up work in the future as you uh, encounter finding the area of figures. Um, for an assignment here, I would like you guys to try page 543, number 5 to 23 odd, 37. 543, 5 to 23 odd and 37. You should expect to have a quiz over law of so, uh, cosines and area of triangle uh, Friday of this week to kind of wrap up this e-learning segment before spring break. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please uh, reach out to me. I hope you're all doing well. Adios.